I was speaking earlier about Abu Jahl. He had taken a boulder once after having sp spoken to the chiefs of Quraysh in the early days, just after the call became open and apparent. And he said, I'm going to kill this young man. And then Banu Hashim and those people, his clan and his family can do what they want to me. I just want to sort the problem out because we're going to lose our power here. We are powerful people leading Quraysh. And we are calling towards these idols every year. The Arabs are coming around and they are worshipping the idols. And we are going to lose this power because he is calling us to leave everything that we're doing at this moment in time. All this worship is a waste of time, he is saying. Worship your maker and none other than your maker. So if that's the case, we're going to lose. What should we do? Well, I'm going to sort him out. So he decided the following day he took the boulder. Whilst Muhammad ﷺ was in sajda, he was about to throw that boulder on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from a little bit of a height and suddenly he stopped and he turned around he went back he put the boulder down and the people of Quraysh who were watching him started laughing at him hey what happened here you the big man of uh, Quraysh here yeah, Abu Jahl and now what has happened here he says you know when I got near him I suddenly saw a massive camel huge camel come in my direction and it wanted to eat me up Allahu Akbar and a big man he was so worried so scared he started seeing this camel and he says it's the I quickly turned around I put the boulder down and I carried on Allah he doesn't that sound like a little baby Allahu Akbar this was Allah protecting his messenger this was Allah this has happened twice to Abu Jahl the once he was he had oppressed a man May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was there. The people of Quraysh told this man, if Abu Jahl owes you money, there's only one way you're going to get it. And they, they said this jokingly. They wanted to make a mockery of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They said, go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If he talks to Abu Jahl, you'll get your money back. Now that was a mockery because they knew these two Obviously, they, nobody is going to listen to the other here. So when this man went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, come, let's go. He went to Abu Jahl, knocked on his door. Abu Jahl opened the door. And when he opened the door, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you owe this man some money. He says, yes, I do. And he gave the man his money and uh, the problem was solved. So the people of Quraysh, they got to hear about it. The leader said, Abu Jahl, what happened? The same thing happened. He says, when the knock on the door happened, I got frightened. I came to the door and I was so scared. And when I came there, I saw these two people. I was asked for the wealth. And as I was about to answer, I saw the same camel come in my direction. Allahu Akbar. That was the punishment of Allah to Abu Jahl. And that was also showing Quraysh that don't make a mockery of this messenger. We have protected him against all mocking. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So that was Abu Jahl and this is what he had done. Also, if you look at verses of the Quran, you see the first surah, the first verses that were revealed were Iqra. We know that if you look further down that surah, you will find certain verses relating to Abu Jahl. If you pick up the English translation and read those verses, you will find something very interesting. Abu Jahl, every time he saw Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praying, he would go and stop him, stop him and he would physically try and chase him away so what had happened Allah revealed verses and these verses were directed to Abu Jahl and mentioning his story right to the end of that surah the verses meaning do you see the one who stops the worshiper from praying do you see the one who is stopping the worshiper from praying does he not see what if he is on the right path what if muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is correct then what is this man going to do and what if this man here is totally wrong what's going to happen so why stop a man who is praying to the almighty for what why stop him and these verses admonished 
uh, Abu Jahl and warned him of a severe punishment to say, you can do what you want. You can call all your helpers, but on that day, we will call the gatekeepers of hell and they will take you. They will take you from your forelock. You read those verses, very powerful verses in the same surah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Another man, Abu Lahab. And we need to know these names, the names of the enemies, just like we knew the names or we learned the names of those who had uh, accepted Islam in the early days. We will also know who were those who harmed Islam and who harmed the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu Lahab was his uncle and he was also a neighbor. And every day he used to throw out his rubbish and dirt at the door of his neighbor Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to come out and see all the dirt and all the bin literally of Abu, of Abu Lahab at his doorstep and he would take it away and he would continue saying what kind of a neighbor is this up to today we as muslims are not allowed to do anything that would harm our neighbor whether he is a muslim or not we are not allowed to do anything so much so that if you want to light a fire or a smoke make sure that the smoke does not affect them negatively ensure that Otherwise, we cannot call ourselves true followers of this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Some people, astaghfirullah, they disturb the neighbor with so much noise every single day. And the neighbors, if they're not Muslim or if they're Muslim, did you know they have a right for you to ensure the peace and the calm within their home? They must not be harmed from your noise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So Abu Lahab, he was one of those who did that. And you know, his wife, Ummu Jamil, was also a culprit. She used to also throw defecation at Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, literally. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala spoke about her in Surah Lahab, as we heard yesterday. May Allah safeguard us. These people did nothing good for themselves. Because one is to keep quiet and to carry on with whatever you're doing. But the other is to get up and harm the man harm the man if you're going to harm him you will really pay for it and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us today what happens in our societies we hear of something and we don't even know this man serves the cause of Allah he has dedicated his life to serve the deen of Allah and what we do we spread rumor about him we spread gossip about him we make his life difficult we cause this and cause that what will happen as a result do we not think allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us may he make us from those who are worried about ourselves and our deeds and we are worried about our link with our maker and if we are worried about others we are meant to be worried about our brothers and sisters across the globe who are suffering and if we can we should do something positive about it but we should never engage in something negative may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us a very dangerous man his name was uqba ibn abi muayt this man when abu jahl called out one day and he said i have the defecation of these camels who is going to throw it on muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he is in sajda imagine when he is in sajda and Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt got up, he picked up this thing here and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in sajda and literally the defecation of the camel, a'udhu billah, Allah safeguard us. He threw it onto the back of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he remained in sajda. The Muslims at the time were weak, nobody could go to remove it. Do you know what happened? His little daughter Fatima radiallahu anha, small little girl, what she did, she saw her father in this condition of sujood and she saw that he's got all this on his back. These people of Mecca have really harassed him. They have thrown this. So she went and she took it off his back and she actually wiped it out completely. And then he got up from Sajda. And this is what Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayf did. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got up, he says, Allahumma alayka bi fulanin wa fulan. Oh Allah, I hand so and so over to you. I hand so and so over to you. And he mentioned names. Imagine for the messenger to make a dua. Oh Allah, I'm handing them over to you. Alayka bihim. Ya Allah, you deal with them. What a powerful way of making dua. And they, he was executed after the battle of Badr. He was one of those who was taken captive and executed. And together with him was a friend of his as well, who also harassed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a lot by the name of an-Nadr ibn al-Harith. 
So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to safeguard us from the dua of his friends against us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us at all times. So this Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayyid, this was one of the ways that he had hassled Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was also a neighbor of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One day he invited Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his home with the people of Quraysh. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to go whenever Quraysh invited him because he would feel maybe they might listen to me. Maybe they might listen to a word or two and come onto the right path. So when Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayyut invited him, he went and he entered the house and he says, Ya Uqba, do you know what? I'm not going to eat your food until you bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah and that I am the messenger of Allah. So Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayyut looked at him and said, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah. And I bear witness that you are a messenger. So the people of Quraysh later on, they said, what did you say? Did we hear you say that you bear witness? He said, no, I had a guest in my house who refused to eat until I said a few words. So I said them, A'udhu Billah. That was the worst statement he could have ever uttered. Because there were others who were weak and downtrodden in Makkah. They never cheated in that way. When they uttered it, they uttered it powerfully with sincerity. This man was wealthy. He had nothing to lose whether he said it or not. He could have told him, hey, you can carry on. But he didn't do that. He decided to cheat. And because of that, he paid a heavy price. One day he was so upset. He came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was one of the worst things that have happened in Makkah to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He took a piece of cloth, this Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayyid, and he strangled Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he kept pulling this cloth. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was choking. And the only person who had rushed to his help was Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And he rushed and he wrestled this Uqba and released Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from that stranglehold. And he said, أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ وَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ How can you kill a man who is saying, my Lord is Allah? And he has brought you clear-cut signs and you want to kill him. Leave him alone at least. Allahu Akbar. This was that Uqba. Another man who really harassed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Al-As ibn Wa'il. He was a man who constantly used to pass and laugh and joke. He used to say, these people believe in life after death. They say there's going to be heaven and everybody's going to get so many nice things and there's going to be hell and there's going to be this and that. So every time he used to pass, he used to joke about it. And he used to say, مَا هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا وَمَا يُهْلِكُنَا إِلَّا الدَّهُ Those verses were revealed saying the statement that this man, Al-As ibn Wa'il used to utter and the people of Quraysh. They used to say, Oh, we are only going to live in this life and there is no life after death. Whatever will kill us or what will actually kill us is time. It's only time that makes us old and we will die. We're not going to be resurrected. And Allah says, In whom illa yadunnun. Those are their doubts. What do they know? But this man crossed a certain limit. What was that limit? He was owed money by Khabbab ibn al-Arat. In fact, he owed money to Khabbab ibn al-Arat radiallahu anhu. Al-As ibn Wa'il owed money to Khabbab ibn al-Arat who was a Muslim. And Khabbab ibn al-Arat, every time he went to him, this man used to duck and die. Because now the Muslims, nobody's going to come and say, hey, where's this man's money? So one day Khabbab ibn al-Arat had got hold of a few people and they went to this man and told him, look, you know, you need to give him his money. So Al-As ibn Wa'il says, isn't he one of those who believes that there's going to be heaven and there's going to be lots of goodness and in heaven you get whatever you want and so on. So Khabbab says, yes, indeed, I believe that. There will be heaven and we get what we want there. So he says, so give me a little bit of time when we get to heaven and I get whatever I want, then I'll pay you your money. Now look at how foolish he is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses exposing this man. أَفَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي كَفَرَ بِآيَاتِنَا وَقَالَ لَأُوتَيَنَّ مَالًا وَوَلَدًا Do you see this man who has disbelieved in our signs and he is saying that I am going to be given lots of wealth and lots of children in, in paradise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks a question. Does he even think he is going to go to paradise? 
And does he even know whether he's going to get anything or not? Subhanallah. How can he come and utter that, okay, I'm going to go to paradise when he disbelieves in it? So this was also exposing uh, this man, Al As ibn Wa'il, when it came to him and the money that he owed Khabbab ibn al Arat radiallahu anhu. Remember, every time these bad things happened, it drifted the people who did them further and further away from the message. Look at the others who had harmed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al Aswad ibn al Muttalib. This was a cousin of Khadija radiallahu anhu. And he used to laugh at the Muslims. And the verses in Surah Al Mutaffifin were revealed regarding this man. The criminals used to laugh at those who believe. Up to today, you want to grow your beard according to the teachings of all the messengers, whether it is Jesus, peace be upon him, Moses, peace be upon him, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or all the other messengers, every single one of them grew facial hair. So if you'd like to grow it, you find people making a mockery out of you. They laugh. You find women who want to cover and dress according to the dress code of the Muslims. In fact, it goes back further than that. Even Mary, Maryam, alayha salatu wasalam, may peace be upon her, the mother of Jesus, may peace be upon her. What type of clothing did she wear? We do not draw images of her, but the Christians who draw images of her, have they ever drawn images of her with a jeans or a t-shirt? Or a hipster? No, they drew her images exactly how the Muslim women dress today. Subhanallah. But we are considered people who are backward because we want to follow the mother of Jesus. May peace be upon her in her dress code. Allahu Akbar. Look at how the world has gone upside down. We want to follow Jesus. May peace be upon him in his looks. Have you ever seen them? We don't draw images as you know. Have you seen them draw images of Jesus, may peace be upon him, in a suit and a tie, clean shaven? Not one, never. So when we want to wear our robes and grow our beards, they tell us these people are like this and these people are like that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them. And may he guide us as well. So this man used to laugh. These verses in Surah Al Mutaffifin were revealed about him, and Allah says, On this day, the believers will be given the opportunity to laugh at those who laughed at them from amongst the disbelievers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and grant us goodness. There was another man known as Al Walid ibn al Mughira. He was the uncle of Abu Jahl. He also had a lot to do in terms of harm against the Muslims. He went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he heard verses of the Quran. He came back to his people and he told his people, I have heard the Quran and you know what? It is very powerful. It is not the speech of an ordinary man, nor is it the speech of a fortune teller, nor is it the speech of a poet, nor is it the speech of a madman. No, it has a sweetness in it and it will have some form of rank in the very near future because it's very powerful. And the people of Quraysh were shocked because he was the uncle of Abu Jahl and he was one of the leaders. They said, are you senile? This man has now gone mad. Abu Jahl decided to go to him and spoke to him and began to weep and tell him, how can you say this? Come on, a man like you, we look up to you. We can't lose you. We cannot lose you to this type of thing. And so he got up and he walked to the rest of Quraysh and he says, Do you ever think Muhammad was mad? He was never mad. And there is no sign of madness in him. They were watching him. Does he look like he's a fortune teller? He's not a fortune teller. They were watching him. They shocked. Does he look like a person who is a magician? Does he look like he's a person who is this and that? So many things. And thereafter, when all of them were looking at him quite shocked, he then says, well, I think we'd rather just call him a magician because it's magicians who separate between husband and wife and family members. And that's what he has done. So they all started laughing. Look at how he almost accepted the message, but because of his colleagues and his dignity in society, he did not want to accept the message. This was Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Al-Nadr ibn al-Harith, 
He used to always say, I have better speech than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Come listen to me. When the Quran was being read, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ وَالْغَوْ فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَغْلِبُونَ They used to say, whilst the Quran was being read, make a lot of noise. Don't listen, make a lot of noise. Because if you want to overpower Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, don't listen to his message. Why did they say that? The minute people heard the message, they turned. They heard a verse, they turned. They heard five verses, they turned. So they had one option, make a noise, ban him, don't allow him to read. Stop it, we don't want to hear these words. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is what they uttered. This man used to say, no, 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 come to me, I will give you better stories. And he knew a few stories of the, of the Persian Empire. So he used to come and make mention of this Persian leader and that Persian leader, which was nothing like the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him elevation, although they were persecuted to a great degree. Allah blessed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with an uncle. An uncle who was never a Muslim, but he was just and he had a feeling for his nephew. And this is why they could not kill Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Abu Talib, who was one of the leaders of Quraysh, powerful leader, when Abu Jahal and them planned to harm Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told them, you dare touch him. If you do, war will break out. So now they knew we cannot touch the man. And this is why Allah had protected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the same applies to others who had family. They were protected because they had family members who always stood by them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted this Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this uncle who did not accept the message. Quraysh went to the uncle and told him, talk to your nephew, tell him to stop. So when he went to the nephew, he said, look, you know, you're putting me in a spot here. Quraysh, we know we have got good dealings with them. We are related. And you know, now you, are, you have come with what you have come with. Why don't you stop saying all this? Because it's about time you stopped. He told his uncle, Wallahi, if you were to put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand and instruct me to stop what I am doing, I will not stop it. I am asking them to leave their idols. What's wrong? This was the persecution. So his uncle looked at him and said, Oh, my nephew, carry on. Don't worry. Carry on. You are safe. Imagine, meaning deep down he knew what was right. He knew what was right. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had then made, meaning blessed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam much more. He had respect in Quraysh, but at the same time hatred. They were forced to respect him, but deep down they hated him. In fact, what they did, and this is a very interesting story. They got together. And they decided, let's send a man from amongst us, an eloquent man. This eloquent man, we will send him and he will go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and address him, ask him questions and offer him whatever he wants. Because they now noticed Islam was growing and it was becoming strong. Nearly every powerful family had some members in it who were Muslim. So Utbah ibn Rabi'ah was a man who decided, okay, I'm going to go. He went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, oh, you're a relative of ours. You know, we know your status, very high standing and so on. And we'd like you to understand that we don't want to be at war, loggerheads. What do you want? You want wealth? We give you wealth. You want position? We make you our leader. You want women? You can marry whom you want. You want authority? We make you the leader and you can be in authority. What is it that you want? You name what you'd like, we give it to you. And he continued to say, but just stop talking about these idols and stop talking about this condition of ours. We're enjoying life. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, are you done? He says, yes. Now listen to me. And he began reading verses. The opening verses of Surah Fussilat, also known as Hamim al-Sajda. Hamim tanzilum min ar-Rahman rahim Kitabun fussilat ayatuhu Qur'anan arabiyya. This man was shocked, gobsmacked, listening to these verses, powerful verses. Let us go home, inshallah, this evening and look up Surat Fussilat 
and check the meanings of the first verses of the surah until the verse where the punishment of Ad and Thamud is made mention of. And we will see when the Prophet, peace be upon him, got to the verse saying, if they turn away, warn them of the similar punishment that had struck Ad and Thamud before them. Utbah ibn Rabi'ah took his hand and covered the mouth of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, stop, I don't even want to hear. And thereafter, he went back to Quraysh and told them, I have heard a word. And I'm telling you, this word is going to overpower us completely. And they looked at him, but we sent you to go and tell the man something. You're coming back telling us something else. He says, no, 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 I'm not accepting it. But I just want to let you know, in my view, this word is extremely powerful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand that if the enemies can confirm that the word is powerful, what about us who are Muslims? Have we read it yet? This is why I say this evening, inshallah, let us go back home and let us look at the verses of Surat Fussilat, also known as Hamim as Sajda, and let us read the meanings and see what was said to this man, Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, that moved him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala move us until we meet again. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdih. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Unlock spiritual enrichment with One Islam TV app. Immerse yourself in a unique experience that is music free, fully halal, and continuously updated with fresh content daily. Enjoy a user-friendly experience with features that allow you to save your favorite videos, create personalized playlists, and download and watch your content offline. Download the One Islam TV app now and embark on a transformative journey where faith and entertainment unite.